here is my 1977 Datsun 280Z. I bought this car in 2018, and at that time, it had already sat for 10 years. The guy had it up on Craigslist as a parts car, and I convinced him just to sell me the whole thing. As you can tell now, it actually runs and drives, but it sure was a ton of work to get it to this point. Nearly everything in the engine bay was touched. I actually have some pictures of when I first bought the car. And now you can see a picture of the engine bay after a whole lot of cleanup was done. There's actually video of this car's first start and first drive. I have a binder of receipts of all the parts that have been thrown at this car. Everything fuel related was replaced. It has new fuel pump, fuel injectors, injector harness. It had the basic tune up done to it. Along with that, replaced a bunch of vacuum lines. It actually also needed a new ECU. The cooling system has been redone. The coolant hose has been replaced. The radiator is actually a new aluminum unit after the old one blew up. The alternator actually died on me going to work one day and that was replaced with a new unit from a T31 300ZX. Everything brake related has been replaced. So that would be brake lines, brake rotors, pads. It's got drums in the rear so it, the drums were rebuilt. This dashboard has had a lot of work done to it. This was probably the worst cracked dash that I've personally seen. Um, I've put a lot of work into it. I used a fiberglass Bondo and a uh, finish paint from SEM to get the original black. And I think it turned out pretty well. This fix lasted for just about two years until I started to see some cracks come up again. Uh, it is certainly a lot better than what it was before. But now that it's cracking, uh, it's probably gonna need to be done again. All the gauges in, in this car kind of work. The, the temperature gauge is intermittent, the oil pressure gauge is intermittent, fuel gauge doesn't work, but the important ones, speed and RPM, work just fine. Everything in this car is analog. It's got manual steering, manual transmission, manual windows. It's even got an analog clock. These seats are an absolute mess. Uh, this is how the seats showed up to me. I haven't done anything with the seats. I certainly plan to refinish them because they're not at all comfortable. Right now, I'm on a remote country road no lane divider, pretty narrow, and this thing absolutely rips. This is the kind of road that this car was made for. This car really comes alive after 3,000 RPM. There's really nothing happening below that. You really gotta ring it out. If you can find one for a good price that's not just clapped out, bird shit, and rust, and one that's not completely restored and they want $20,000 for it, you really need to go ahead and get one. I've always been on the lookout for one of these. Ever since I bought my 300ZX, I always wanted an S30 chassis. It was 
like, man, if I could just find one of these, and I found one, and I'm really glad I picked it up. It was certainly worth the effort of bringing it back to life. You can probably hear the exhaust drones a little bit. That has to be done. The brakes right now, they're a little stabby. Really lurches you forward. So I think the brake booster is going bad. The suspension could do with a little refresh. In my time of ownership so far, I haven't touched any of the suspension work, but I know that somebody has put some lowering springs on it. Somebody's done some work previously. So it actually handles okay, but you know, there's, there's a little bit of looseness in there that can be dealt with. Because the previous owner threw this car into a ditch, one of the rims is actually bent pretty, pretty poorly. When I got new tires put on, the tire shop actually said that they couldn't even get the wheel balanced. It's in that back corner over there where I try and not feel it. Thankfully, this car on the highway is, you know, all rattles and shakes anyways, so you don't really even feel that. There's a little bit of interior stuff missing. This thing's a little flappy. There's some shakes and rattles here. This panel I have is just missing because I was trying to find some electrical gremlins. And that's really what you're going to be fighting. Electrical gremlins in these. Daniel here. And if you're finding anything at all interesting about the 280Z or what's sitting back here behind me, then be sure to subscribe for any content. Make sure to also like or comment on the video. If there's anything specific you want to see about the 280Z or any work you want to see done, be sure to leave that down below. Here in front of me, I have the answer to what you're probably thinking about right now, which is how much does one of these bad boys cost? And how much does it cost to own? Well, we'll just get right to it. And after purchase price, registration, taxes, parts, labor for things that I didn't physically do, and everything that I have receipts for that I've printed out here or scoured through my emails, uh, it is $3,472.69 for this, which is actually under budget and over delivered on expectations. One caveat to this for the total price is that it does not include random consumables. So this would be like hose clamps, clips, hoses, electrical tape or anything like that that gets reused for any of the other projects that I have those costs were not actually included. There's been plenty of trips to the hardware store taken. Um, that, that is one thing to bear in mind. One thing I probably want to address is how is the cost so low, right? The car's from 1977, like how is it that cheap to run? One of the reasons is that this is not a Concorde restoration car, right? This is a driver, the paint is rough, there is rust. There, the, the main large ticket items that cost a lot of money on on restorations which is bodywork that bodywork has not been done to this and that's one way that the total cost of ownership is lower another way is that i do all the labor myself except for tires and if there's any other random specialty things everything else gets done by me the only two things that were not done by me besides tires were a the heater control valve was actually uh, rebuilt by Arizona Z car along with the combination switch. Those two items right there are were relatively expensive to have repaired, but they work. So I am not upset with that. One other thing is that even though this is a relatively high mileage car at 194,000 miles, there's nothing catastrophically wrong that's happened yet. So engine's not locked up or blown up. Um, it's really just been fluids, baselining, and small parts here and there that are breaking, that are being fixed. Out of that total cost, out of that $3,400, um, some of the biggest ticket items in there were the carpet kit, the weather stripping kit, not all of it's installed, but that was very expensive. Have a new radiator, the combination switch repair, and the heater control valve and tires. Those were the largest ticket items to actually get the car running. 
Everything else was able to be sourced through normal part suppliers like Advance or AutoZone or Rock Auto or, or even specialty other uh, Z stores. Um, you know, back in the day, people would race them and then toss them in a ditch and just go get another one. So uh, people don't do that anymore. They actually restore them now. So as a result, there's actually a very strong aftermarket, pretty good aftermarket support. You can buy pretty much anything you can think of for, for these now. And it also helps that they made a lot of them. So I think specifically in 77, they made like 55,000 uh, two-seater 280Zs. You know, they probably made like over a quarter million S30 chassis Z cars. So uh, what that means is because so many of them were made, the parts availability is actually still relatively decent and you can find parts almost, almost anywhere. Now there are some like niche things, like maybe interior parts that you're not gonna be able to find and you will get nickel and dimed on eBay. Um, but bear in mind that a rare car means even rarer parts. Thankfully, because they made a lot of them, this kind of stays away from that issue. Another thing to keep in mind with the total cost of ownership on this is that I didn't go crazy with mods. It is really easy to try and justify in your head that oh man, I, w I wish I had a sick wheel and tire setup. Man, if I had just had those new set of headers or those mods will bankrupt you. Um, you can go, you, you, can be, you can be ridiculous with it. There's no reason to. You know, drive the car as is, if you have one. If you're looking to buy a project, drive the car as is. Don't go crazy with mods because you will bankrupt yourself and experience all that it has to offer, right? really you know make the best of it and really understand that if you wanted something with more power or more grip or more modern amenities buy something else right don't buy a 280z if you don't like loud noises and being uncomfortable appreciate the car for what it is and so that's something that i've really tried to stick to and that as well has helped keep the cost down now the final question would I recommend buying a 280Z today? Uh, short answer, yes. Long answer, maybe. And it really depends on a couple factors, which is what are you actually looking for in a car, in a project car, price, and the quality of the car that you're actually looking at. One of the most common things that you can do is you can just follow this, this is free advice here, which is, buy the best car that you can afford. That way you can skip through many, many, many of the issues that you're gonna have if you buy one that is rusted out with a knocking engine or something like that. If you're gonna buy a total basket case, be prepared to just dump out your pockets and bankrupt yourself. Just buy the best car that you can up front and that way you can actually drive it and you can actually enjoy it. Now, if you can't afford a nice example, then maybe you should put it off. You know, maybe it's not, it's not the right time for you or look into different cars, right? Or a different car that fills the same niche. The reality of project car ownership is that it really is pay to play. So uh, just bear that in mind when you're trying to get into this. If you have any more questions about the 280Z or ownership experience or anything else related to it, uh, go ahead and leave a comment down below and I'll make sure to read it and give an actual response to it. And with that, I think that's, that's about it.